after being falsely accused by my cousin and her fiancés, they tried to break into my house which led me to call the police. Now I'm pursuing a protective order and dealing with the resulting family drama. My parents divorced when I was very young. My mom got me for most of the year and my dad got me for the summer. I hated going to my dad's house. Partially because he was very stubborn and rude and always had to do things his way, but also because every time I went to my dad's house, I got violently sick. Nausea, rashes, pain, muscle cramps, and then when I got older, I'd start missing my periods. TMI. I went to a doctor, but he said it was a psychosomom room related to stress and directed me to see a therapist. My dad didn't let me see a therapist because he thought it was total crap. My mom took me to one a few times, but by then my symptoms had cleared up so we couldn't tell if it helped at all. One thing that really pissed me off was that my dad ate a lot of junk food and drank soda instead of water, and he mocked me mercilessly if I tried to eat healthy. I think it reminded him of my mom because she's always been a bit of a health nut. I would sneak carrots into the house, and if he found them, he'd throw them out. At my mom's house, I'd eat vegetables and organic chicken. Sometimes food would make me feel sick, but I'd just stop eating that food and it was fine. I got into the habit of turning down any food offered to me because I didn't know if it was safe. I just explained it away as being a picky eater. And then, when I was 16, a new girl moved to my school. I became friends with her, and after a couple months I noticed that she avoided all the same foods as me. I mentioned it in passing like, hey, isn't that weird? And she got concerned and told me that she had celiac disease and I should get myself checked. I got checked, and sure enough, I had it. Everything suddenly made sense. I was so excited to finally understand what was wrong that I told everybody I knew. I told all of the people who I thought were my friends, and they didn't really react well. They acted fine at first, but I noticed that they were all doing the slow fade on me. I confronted my closest friend about it, and she said that they all thought I was faking it for attention. They'd only heard about gluten-free diets as a stupid fad. I broke down crying and told her all about how horrible I felt when I had to go to my dad's house and how I couldn't believe that she didn't believe me and she could buy a right. She turned around and became my biggest supporter. She talked to the others, but they still thought I was full of shit and feeding her lies, so we decided it was best to break it off with them. My birthday is in August, so I had two more summers with my dad left to go through after I found out. He took the revelation about my disease even worse than my ex-friends. He would scream that I thought I was better than him and I was making up medical problems because I wanted to be special and that he wouldn't put up with that shit. I offered to take him with me to the doctor, but he said that doctors are scam artists and he didn't believe anything they said. It was horrible. It got to the point where he started sabotaging my food and cursing at me when I got sick. So, I've gotten pretty wary about telling people about the disease. Between my personal experiences and hearing people make fun of gluten-free food on TV and the internet, I've decided I'm not comfortable with telling new people. I know that's cowardly, but I'm so afraid of what people will think of me. This is my last summer with my dad, and it's the last summer with my dad. He can rot in hell for all I care. He treats me like shit. I've only got to tough it out for another few weeks, that's not my problem. I can already hear your advice about leaving my dad's house or calling seeps and respectfully. I've made my decision that it's easier just to stay for the next three weeks and then leave forever. Please don't focus on that part. This is the problem I need help with. My best friend and I have made a new group of friends. They're great people, really fun. We play role-playing games every weekend. We've been hanging out since May. There's 10 or 11 of them depending on whether you count this guy who doesn't regularly attend games. My best friend approached me yesterday and told me that the rest of the group has been talking behind my back. They've put together the fact that I constantly turn down food and that I'm very picky about what I eat and that I've been getting thinner and acting sick because I've been living with my dad and come to the conclusion that I have anorexia. They're planning on staging an intervention for me next weekend. Guys, I don't know what to do. This is such an awkward situation. I know I should tell them, but I'm so scared they're going to reject me. They've already got this idea in their heads about what's wrong. At this point, I'm afraid they'll think I'm just making excuses. And I've been burned before. I lost a ton of friends by telling them about my disease. Yeah, they were dicks, but it fucking hurt. How do I do this? How do I explain it so they'll believe me? I can't handle any more people calling me a liar. I'll have a mental breakdown. This disease has ruined my life in so many ways. I just wanted to have this one part of my life separate from that. Please read it. Give me advice. Told her. I can't eat gluten. That means I have to turn down food a lot and I'm in a situation where it's forced on me so I'm sick and losing weight. The last friends I told accused me of lying and broke it off with me so I haven't told my new friends. They got the wrong idea and now think I'm anorexic. They're going to hold an intervention next weekend and I have no idea what to say. Update. Hey guys, thanks for all your help. The intervention was yesterday and I figured you guys would want to know how everything went. I figured this was probably the intervention and texted my best friend. I think there was some confusion in the last post. This is the friend who was with my other friend group who I poured my heart out to then she followed me to the new group, let's call her Laura, to ask if she'd been invited to. 
She hadn't, so I asked her to come with me. Before I went to his house, I did something a little cheeky inspired by one of the comments on the last post, thanks you, I'd have to charge. I went and picked up some gluten-free Chinese food from a place I frequent. They have this amazing vegetable fried rice that I've fallen in love with. They're really careful about cross-contamination. I've been eating there for years and never gotten sick. I brought the food with me to Zach's house along with Laura and my notebooks and dice for role-playing. Zach seemed really taken aback that Laura was there. I asked him if he had a problem with it, because if we were going to talk about complicated gaming things, then she should be part of the conversation because of qualifications. Uh, I'm really sorry, I'm trying not to drop a crap ton of gaming jargon on why all. He awkwardly said that it was fine. Then I said something like, is it alright if I eat something while we do this? I missed lunch and I'm really hungry, and pulled out the Chinese food. He said it was fine but seemed kind of alarmed like I was freaking him out. I started eating and he started his pitch, yeah help help celiac, I didn't actually call you here to talk about game crap. Me and some of the others have noticed some things recently that we're concerned about and they elected me to talk to you about it. I said, okay, he listed off a bunch of things that I've been doing that made them worry about me. The way they never saw me eat anything, that I always seemed sick and was getting thinner, the fact that I always seemed uncomfortable and nervous when the topic of food came up, that I turned down everything offered to me and then he finally dropped the bombshell. You help help celiac, Michael's older sister is anorexic and she acts a lot like you do. We think you might be anorexic. I swallowed my food and tried not to look nervous. I'm not, I told him. He started talking about how nobody thinks they're anorexic but there's clearly something going on with me and he started just rambling so I cut him off. I do have a problem. It's not anorexia, can I talk? He reluctantly agreed. I think he was afraid I was going to say that I was too fat and my problem was that I needed to lose weight or something. Like he really got committed to the idea that I was anorexic. I'm going to try to paraphrase what I said here because I was very proud of myself for it. I know I'm losing weight in an unhealthy way, but it's not on purpose. I have a disease that means I can't eat grains like wheat, barley, and rye. When I do, I get very sick and my body starts ripping up my stomach and I can't digest much of anything, even things that don't have those grains in them. It's not just an allergy, it does serious long-term damage to me. If I ate a piece of bread, I would break out in rashes, I'd start throwing up and I might get stuff that seems unrelated like horrible muscle cramps. When I turn down food, it's because you guys offer me stuff like Doritos and PBJs. If I ate that stuff, it would make me violently ill. I turn it down to keep from making my health problems even worse. And the reason my symptoms have been popping up and I've been getting sick and losing weight is that right now I'm living in a family situation where I'm forced to eat the foods that my body reacts badly to. When I first met you guys, I was living with my mom and she accommodated me really well. But right now I'm living with my dad and he sabotages my food because he thinks I'm making my disease up and that my doctor is a fraud. Zach took out actual note cards and looked through them. He literally had a script for the intervention. That's what I get for hanging out with the kind of dramatic people who play tabletop RPGs, I guess. He was quiet for a really long time. Then he had a few questions. But then why do you turn down my Coke? Because Coke is nasty, but I didn't want to complain and make you guys buy root beer just for me. Two, why didn't you just tell us this stuff? Laura took this one and explained what happened with our last friend group. Three, okay, so what would I probably have in the house right now that you'd be willing to eat in front of me? I wanted to face bomb at this one. I asked if he was serious. He was. I don't know. Have you got celery? He shook his head. Yogurt? Nope. An apple? Nope. Seriously. He nodded. Have you got some freaking popcorn? Like air pop popcorn that he did have. So I ate some popcorn in front of him and he finally seemed to accept what I was saying. He awkwardly changed the subject to gaming things and we talked about that until the rest of the group started to show up. When Michael got there, Zach took him aside and started talking to him in a way that I guess they thought was subtle. They kept looking over at me and they weren't keeping their voices down very well. Michael asked if I seemed offensive and Zach shrugged and said not really. I pointedly ate popcorn for the rest of the game. Michael texted me after the game and apologized for assuming that I was anorexic and asked what acts they could put out for me. I actually cried a little bit. I was worried about getting kicked out but they immediately moved to accommodate me. They're nice people. Now to the next story. Story 2. My cousin married my toxic ex, spread lies about me, trashed me at their wedding, and then tried breaking into my house. So my cousin Julia, 27F, started dating my ex-boyfriend Louis, 29M, two years ago. I, 27F, had been with Louis for three years. We started dating after he graduated and I was in my second year of college. We stayed together for three years and broke up a couple of weeks after my 20th birthday. It was honestly not a good relationship and I regret that it was my first relationship as an adult. He and I were perfect on paper, but in reality, things were quite different. He was really insecure and controlling, not letting me do anything by myself. Like going out with friends to bars or even talking to my male friends. He was always keeping tabs on me and anytime I didn't do what he wanted, he would manipulate and gaslight me into thinking I was the problem. I was pretty desperate to keep him around, so I would bend over for him, but that was still not enough. He was the one who dumped me, saying things weren't working out, 
and then proceeded to block me so I couldn't contact him. I tried really hard to get in touch with him, but after the breakup he was completely gone. Within two months I heard from people that he had already moved on to another girlfriend. That relationship felt like a colossal waste of my time, and I really don't like that guy. We had no contact for a while after the breakup, but when I turned 25, he unblocked me and reached out to wish me a happy birthday. I didn't respond, and I thought it was strange that he was texting me, especially since I had moved on and was with someone else. He kept texting me even though I didn't reply, so I eventually blocked him again, and we didn't speak for months. A few months after my birthday, Julia invited me over and told me she wanted to introduce me to someone. To my shock, it was Louis. Apparently, the reason he had been texting me earlier was that he wanted to make things right with me before he started dating Julia. They had met through work and were quite serious about each other. Julia and I had been really close since childhood, so it came as a big shock to me. She knew how toxic he had been to me, so I was taken aback when I realized they were together. Julia told me she knew I would be uncomfortable, but she wanted me to give him another chance. I wanted to be happy for Julia, but Louis was someone who had caused me a lot of pain, especially since he was my first serious relationship. I had a major grudge against him for how he treated me. Despite trying to be respectful, I told Julia that I couldn't accept her relationship with Louis and didn't think I wanted to be a part of her life anymore. She was really upset and tried talking to me several times after that, but I just couldn't accept it. Of all people, she knew exactly how toxic he had been to me and how traumatized I was because of him. Yet she still went ahead with dating him. She kept insisting that he had changed and was a better person now, but I didn't buy it. She was free to have him in her life and be with him. I didn't have a problem with that, but I also had the right to cut him and by association her out of my life. It was very simple for me, though obviously really hard as well, since Julia and I were really good friends in addition to being cousins, but it was something I absolutely had to do for my own sake, and I did it. After she told me that she had started dating Louis, I stopped speaking to her. For the past two years, we had been cold to each other. Once she realized that I wasn't going to talk to her, she started acting distant with me too, and I don't blame her for that. We would meet at events and simply ignore each other, whereas we used to be the cousins who stuck together and gossiped about everyone else, things were different now. I was honestly okay with that. Everybody has their own life and the freedom to do as they please, so I didn't have a problem with her, I just didn't want to speak to her anymore. That was it from my side, but I guess she took it personally and wanted to get back at me or something? So she took it upon herself to start talking crap about me to other family members and ruin my image, which I didn't think was necessary at all because I would never do that to her. I had never done that to her, even though we weren't getting along. For the past year, she had been telling everyone that I was the reason for my breakup with Louis and claiming I had no morals or ethics. She and Louis had been spreading rumors saying that I would flirt with other guys right in front of him, and that was the real reason he became possessive and controlling. They made it sound like I was the flirt, and that's why he got insecure but it couldn't have been further from the truth. It was actually the other way around. He was the one who would be overly friendly with other women and expected me to be fine with it but didn't like it when I had male friends, even though I kept those relationships completely platonic. He constantly manipulated and gaslighted me into cutting people out of my life. I found their attempts to ruin my reputation among my own family members very offensive, but I was too busy with my life to care about the rumors they were spreading. It wasn't like anyone actually believed them, so I was fine with it. I didn't respond or react, as I knew that would give them exactly what they wanted, a reaction. I was also aware that putting an end to this would be easy for me. All I had to do was talk to my aunt and she would take care of it. Even though I was no longer close with Julia, I was still close with her mother, who happened to be a federal court judge. I knew she would do the right thing. She's my dad's older sister, and everyone knows she has a spine of steel. She would never do anything underhanded or wrong, so I'm not sure how Julia turned out the way she did despite being her daughter. One conversation with my aunt would put an end to all of this, but I knew that Julia would suffer as a consequence since she was financially subpendent on her mother. She had recently started her own jewelry line, but from what I heard, it wasn't doing too well. I didn't want to bother my aunt with such petty things, and I knew I was strong enough to handle it on my own. I wanted to let this go on and see what kind of ridiculous rumors they would come up with because either way, my other cousins were still coming up to me and telling me what Julia had been saying behind my back. It was amusing to me, almost a form of entertainment. Then, six months ago, they got engaged and announced their wedding date. Soon after, my parents received an invitation, but I didn't and I was fine with it. I didn't expect to be invited to the wedding anyway. I don't think I would have wanted to attend even if I'd been invited given everything that had happened between Julia and me, let alone between me and Louis. The wedding took place three days ago, and it was just another day for me so I wasn't concerned about what was going on there. But after a certain point my phone started flooding with texts from family members, 
all harping on about some speech that Louis and Julia had made at the wedding. I was confused until my parents called and told me they needed to talk. They were the ones who finally explained what had happened and I lost my temper. Apparently, they had taken the opportunity at the wedding to make a horrible speech about me, spreading as many nasty rumors as they could. They wanted to turn the entire family against me. I guess they might have succeeded if I hadn't had any evidence against them in my arsenal. Julia and Louis were clever enough not to mention me by name, but they kept referring to a certain ex-girlfriend who wasn't at the wedding, which obviously meant me. Who else could it have been? They repeated all the rumors they had tried to spread about me before, saying I was a flirt, and apparently a gold digger too. They claimed I would rely on Lewis for money and expect him to pay for everything all because I was just a college student and couldn't be wasteful, so I supposedly demanded that he take care of me financially. None of this was true. I always made a point to split everything on our dates and never expected him to pay for anything, let alone demand it. But the most horrible accusation they made by far was claiming that I had cheated on him, which was supposedly what ended the relationship. Then at the wedding, they said they were glad I was out of their lives and not at the wedding as they didn't want such a negative influence around. They even gave the family an ultimatum, saying from now on they could either invite me to family events or invite them, but if I were present, they wouldn't attend. After that, the texts kept flooding my phone, but I only learned the full story from my parents, and I was majorly pissed. I thanked my parents for what they had done as they had left the wedding immediately after the speech because they couldn't stand Julia going to such lengths. They also told me that my aunt, Julia's mother, was perplexed by what was going on and had spoken to them, asking if what Julia had claimed in her speech was true. It seemed very out of character for me and she was right. I hadn't done anything Julia accused me of, and my aunt was correct to doubt her daughter's truthfulness. After learning what they had said about me in their wedding speech, I decided to go all out. I dug up old screenshots from the past to prove they were lying. It took a lot of digging, and I had to scroll for several minutes to find the part one was looking for. Thankfully, after a long time, I was able to find the screenshots of the chat between me and Lewis from around the time we were breaking up. Thankfully, after a really long time, I was able to find the screenshots of the chat between me and my ex that I'd been looking for. These were from around the time when we were breaking up and he had been particularly toxic and vicious. At that point, he had said a lot of nasty things to me like how he wished he had never started dating me, and how he had wasted three years of his life with me when he had the option to be with other people. As many women had expressed interest in him, he even said that now he could finally go out with other people. There was no mention of cheating, and I'm pretty sure if I had cheated on him, he wouldn't have let it go so easily. I scrolled even further back and found more chats where he was being toxic towards me. Then, I went ahead and posted it all online without any explanation or caption because I knew those chats would speak for themselves. And they did. After I posted the screenshots, people started texting me and commenting on the post, saying they knew the rumors weren't true because it seemed so out of character for me. Everyone had known me since I was a child, and I wasn't the kind of person to do such things. Those screenshots proved that they were lying, and knowing that my family was on my side was all I needed. In fact, several people contacted me to say they had left the wedding because of the things Julia and Louis had said about me. While Julia and Louis had hoped to turn people against me, their speech backfired horribly, and no one was on their side anymore. Worst of all, not even my aunt was on their side anymore, which was a huge blow for them. They contacted me the night of the wedding, literally begging for forgiveness. Apparently, after seeing the screenshots I had posted, my aunt had spoken to them and explained to them just how disappointed she was. Julia had been so dishonest and had tried to ruin my reputation simply because she couldn't stand that I had cut her off for dating my ex-boyfriend. Most of the wedding guests had already left because of the drama, and my aunt told Julia she was deeply upset and disappointed in her behavior. She expected better from her daughter. My aunt even said that until Julia apologized to me and I forgave her, she would cut the two of them out of her life as well. Then she left, despite Julia's desperate attempts to convince her not to. Julia had been financially dependent on her mother for quite some time, and she had even been planning to shut down her business to take a break, which meant she would need her mother's support even more. But since my aunt had decided to cut her off, things were not going according to plan, and Julia was really worried about her future. That's why she and Louis contacted me wanting me to forgive them, take down the post, and speak to my aunt about the situation. I was still really upset about everything that had happened, so I refused to do any of that and blocked both of them. Since then, they have been trying desperately to contact me and get me to change my mind, and now I'm really confused about what I should do. My aunt is an upright woman and we have spoken. She contacted me the day after the wedding to apologize for what Julia had done, but I told her I didn't want my relationship with Julia to affect our relationship. I hadn't let it happen in the past, and I still wouldn't let it happen now. So it's all cool between us, and I know for a fact that if I speak to my aunt, I can make things right for Julia. But I personally feel like I don't really need to. She is a full-grown adult woman and she should be able to sort things out for herself and face the consequences of her actions. However, I also feel like a jerk knowing that I can help her and am choosing not to. I'm just kind of conflicted about what to do right now. So please help me out. Hey.
ITA for not speaking to my aunt and convincing her to forgive my cousin after she made a horrible speech at her wedding with my ex-boyfriend about me. Update 1 Hello, first of all, thank you so much for all the comments and support. Before I get into the update, I just want to clear something up. My parents attended the wedding, like a lot of other family members, because they are part of the older generation in our family. They weren't exactly aware of the rumors being spread about me. Louis and Julia were mostly talking to our cousins and relatives in the same generation as us, around the same age. They kept the older folks out of it, so my parents had absolutely no idea what was being said about me. They attended the wedding out of respect for my aunt, even though they were vaguely aware there was some bad blood between Julia and me after she started dating Louis. I had not said anything to my parents or complained to them on purpose, just as I hadn't mentioned anything to my aunt because I didn't want to drag them or involve them in such petty things. I thought I was above all of that, but clearly Julia and Louis were not. Anyway, the point is, my parents didn't know and that's why they attended the wedding. So, there's no need for anyone to question them or blame them. As soon as they and some of the older family members found out what was being said about me at the wedding, they chose to leave and are no longer on speaking terms with Julia or Louis. So, it's all fine now, and I hope that's clear. Now, moving on, it's been one week since the wedding, and I blocked both Louis and Julia, so they couldn't contact me. But that hasn't stopped them from trying. They keep making new accounts on social media and sending me emails, even though I keep blocking them. They are desperate, but I've made up my mind that I'm not getting involved or helping them out. I've kept in touch with my aunt, and she has made it clear that she will only resume supporting her daughter after I forgive Julia. But honestly, I don't think I need to forgive her. For one whole year, I kept my mouth shut and allowed them to say whatever they wanted about me because I wasn't taking them seriously. But they took that as a free pass to escalate things, and now they're going to have to face the consequences. There's also another point I honestly don't feel like Julia deserves her mother's support. She's in her late 20s and by now she should have a sense of what she wants to do in life. I can't imagine anyone still relying on their parents for money at this point. It's not as if she's not educated or competent. She's just always been too lazy to stick to a job. It was that way in our early 20s when we had just graduated and I thought she would grow out of it, but it's still the same now. In a way, I think I'm doing her a favor. Not receiving financial support from my aunt might push her to be better at her job or whatever she decides to do. Either way, I've made up my mind that I'm not going to help her out. I've discussed this decision with my parents just to ease the burden of the situation. Either way, I have made up my mind that I'm not going to help her out. I discussed this decision with my parents to let go of some of the guilt I had been feeling, and they said I was perfectly justified in whatever I decided to do. It was my call whether or not I wanted to forgive her, and I didn't have to if I didn't feel she deserved it. Just because I was worried about what might happen to her in the future. Besides, Lewis still had a decent job and could support the two of them if they really needed to get by without any financial help from my aunt. The bottom line is, I spoke to my parents, some of my friends, and even you guys here, and most people agree that I have no reason to feel guilty, so I feel much better now, to be honest. I've also taken the post down because I don't think it needed to stay up much longer. Everyone in the family already knows what went down, and I didn't want to keep it on my profile as it would be difficult to explain everything to people who follow me. It was much easier to just take it down. Right now, I'm focusing on myself and trying to let go of all the anger and guilt I'd been feeling over the past few days. I've returned to meditating and am trying to deal with everything in a more zen way. I really hope that Julia and Louis also try to do better with their lives instead of making me the reason they wake up every morning, as they've been doing so far. I think that would be better for all of us. Update 2. Hi. So it's been a month since the wedding and from what I know, Louis and Julia are back to their usual behavior. My aunt is still not speaking to them because I haven't forgiven them yet and at this point I don't feel the need to. I know their apology wasn't genuine, they were only apologizing because they wanted money from my aunt. They didn't actually mean it. After a few days of trying to convince me to forgive them and ask my aunt to speak to them, they gave up when I didn't respond. After that, they went back to spreading rumors about me, and this time they got really creative. Apparently, they've been telling everyone that I was trying to ruin their relationship with my aunt on purpose, because I wanted all the inheritance for myself. It's so absurd, I would never do something like that. My parents are well off and I have a decent job. I'm doing well for myself, and I don't even need to think about inheritance. With the grace of God, I won't need to rely on anyone for money. Maybe they're projecting their own insecurities because they need financial support. Either way, they've been spreading these rumors every time they run into someone from the family in public, which happens pretty often since we all live in the same city. People have been avoiding them like the plague, yet they still find a way to bring me up. I'm genuinely baffled by their obsession with me. I've done nothing for the past month except ignore them, and they can't seem to let go of whatever has happened. Last week, I got pretty annoyed and told my aunt about it. She told me that even if they apologize now, she wouldn't get back in touch with Julia. She communicated this to Julia and blocked her again, which only made them more pissed at me. I know because they made another fake email account to send me an angry message since that's the only way they can contact me now. They told me they were going to make me pay for all of this. Shiver me timbers. I know they're unhinged right now and while I'm not scared, it's definitely inconvenient. So I wrote back and told them that if they tried anything funny, 
I would call the cops and not hesitate to send them to jail. I hope that scares them off, and if not, I have a pretty good security system in place. Update 3. Four days ago, I received an email from Louis and Julia saying I would have to face the consequences of what I had done. I warned them that if they tried anything, I would report them to the police, but that didn't stop them from doing the most idiotic thing imaginable. Last night, they tried to break into my house. Julia has been to my house several times, so she knows I have a very advanced security system. Obviously, I was alerted as soon as they attempted to open my door. I don't even know why they thought my door would be unlocked in the middle of the night at 1 a.m. as soon as the alert went off. I called the police and told them someone was trying to break into my house. I suspected it might be Julia and Louis, but I didn't want to take any chances. The police arrived within 15 minutes, and unfortunately for them, Julia and Louis were dressed like burglars and were caught trying to make a run for it a short distance away from my house. Since they hadn't brought their car, they had cycled all the way to my place. They tried to claim that they knew me personally and weren't trying to steal anything, just wanted to break in to intimidate me a little bit. I don't know why they admitted to that, as if it would make them look better in the eyes of the law. Julia immediately started crying once she was placed in handcuffs, begging me not to press charges, but I had no sympathy left for her. You can't keep screwing up and expect people to forgive you. Louis just stared at me with pure hatred, but that didn't bother me in the slightest. I'm used to it by now. After that, I went back to sleep because I had work in the morning. This morning, I told my aunt and parents about what happened and they already knew because Julia had used her phone to reach out to my aunt for bail. But my aunt refused to even see her. So now, nobody knows what's going to happen. I'm definitely going to press charges and seek a protective order against them. They're clearly unhinged, and I don't want anything more to do with them.